Hello friends, welcome back to that 1870s homestead. My name's Rachel and today is another super fun way to use your Amish friendship bread starter. And we're going to, I've gotten a lot of questions like, do I have to wait till day 10 to use it? And I'm on day eight and we're gonna try it. I don't think so though. So look how bubbly it is. Can, is that coming through on the camera? It's very, very active. Mm, let me see if I can bring you guys down here. If I can get the camera lens to zoom. So you see all those big bubbles? Focus. Okay. So, orp. we're gonna try to make pizza dough. Todd said, hey, do you have any of that Amish friendship bread starter saved away in the fridge? to make um, pizza tonight. And I said, no, but it's really active. I think we could use it. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go through the process of making the pizza dough and I'll show you at the end what it looks like when you cut into the crust. I'll show you rolling it out, how does it behave, all of that stuff. And we'll learn. Um, that's my whole journey this winter with this good little experiment is learning how all the ways to use it and use it properly. So I'm going in with three cups of flour. So one, two, one, two. Okay. And then we need about a teaspoon of salt. Oh, I forgot my dough hook. One second. Not really a dough hook. I'm gonna use the paddle, I think, until I can't use it anymore. And let's get it that little salt and flour incorporated. Alrighty. Super fun thing. If you, I don't know that they make them the way that they used to. I know I got my daughter one for her wedding, but KitchenAid's. They're beasts. I don't tend to use mine too often outside of the holidays because this thing, I feel like it weighs 50 pounds. But this was my mother's. She passed away now 22 years ago. So I inherited it. And she had it when I was in high school. So that was back in the 90s. So it's old and it's still ticking. So I don't know that it would be ticking if it was like an everyday use thing, but maybe this winter, I need to get Todd to do some maintenance on it so it hangs around for the next 20 years of my life. All right, now I'm gonna go in with our Amish friendship bread starter. And how is this different than any old pizza crust? Well, normally you use yeast and this is kind of like a natural occurring yeast product. So, I mean, look at those bubbles. That's fun. It smells really yeasty. And I got a lot of comments on when I started the starter, like, oh, no way can we use that. That's so much sugar compared to like sourdough that you don't use sugar to start it. But you gotta think through that lack, what is that word? The right word that is kind of milk fermentation. Lactobacillus, I think, something like that. Um, that fermentation process that's happening, why it's growing is because the yeast and bacteria and all that good stuff is eating the sugar, feeding off that, feeding off the milk fats, the sugars in the milk and creating this natural yeast uh, byproduct. So <clears throat> I needed my little spatula. All right, now I'm gonna, I think I need to add oil too. I thought I was all ready for you guys. So let's go in with a couple tablespoons of oil. All right. And I'm gonna start with a quarter cup of water. It might take up to a half of a cup. Get our hook back on. Stir 
turn it on low and slow. I'm gonna drizzle in just a little bit more water. I'm gonna switch over to my dough hook now. And I'm going to um, let this knead for say five or eight minutes. Okay, I think that's good enough. I can never get this thing off though. There we go. I just went ahead and set my um, um, oven to the bread proof setting. I have one of those handy dandy settings and you guys, I'm no pizza making professional. So we're just learning and growing together. All right, I'm gonna put this in my bowl and set it in the oven. Don't worry, it's not gonna melt this. It's a low, low, low temperature, probably like 90 degrees or so. And the recipe that I was following said to give it a eight hour rise in a you know, warmish environment. And we're gonna go about six because then that's gonna be dinner time. So it's just gonna be as good as it can be at that time. All right, see you at dinner. Well guys, it is, we're cheating. I mean, so it's only 4.30. I was gonna let this go till six and we're hungry. So the dough did not rise exactly double, but it definitely softened up. So I should have oiled the pan. Oh. Um, so I got Muscle Man in here. He's gonna make his pizza and I'll make my pizza. And there you go. You can have the bigger piece, I'll have the smaller piece. Okay. We have all kinds of toppings to choose from today. We have pepperoni, normal mozzarella cheese, pizza sauce that we made, um, Italian sausage, hot Italian sausage that we took out of the casing and kind of just grilled it or cooked it up that way. It obviously has to be pre-cooked to put it on a pizza. I got out some garlic scape pesto, spinach, um, banana peppers, and we have Parmesan, and we have a very big treat for us, like the actual sliced, proper, real, whole mozzarella. Yeah, I yeah. So. Ooh. Oh, what happened? Oh, don't break my rolling pin. It's my mama's. Okay. Anyway, so we're going to roll this out. I will show you, uh, just understand, it's not the full rise. Like, I should have let this properly go eight hours, like, got up this morning and made it. Um, but I didn't know you wanted it. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, we kind of just cheated a little bit. How does it feel? How many? It feels okay. Yeah. See? Oh, yeah. Is that one yours or mine? That's yours, honey. Thank you, man. Yeah, good job. I'll keep stretching it for you while you do that one. Okay. So this is one way that I like to stretch my pizza dough is after you get it, that initial roll, just walk it with your hands around the edges and it really, gravity kind of just does it for you. Every time we make pizza, it's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. And then we got cornmeal and I just sprinkle some of that on the bottom. Okay, I'm going on with my pesto. You sure you don't want any of this? I'm happy to share. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going normal traditional red sauce. Okay. With kind of not as much crust action as you got going on. Mm-hmm. I apologize for the garlic breath in advance. Mm. So here's me so far, sauce, pepperoni, normal traditional shredded mozzarella sausage. And then we have this that we showed you earlier, fresh mozzarella. Comes like pre-sliced, what's beeping? Oh, oh. I've been preheating. Comes pre-sliced in a little package like this, so you can just take out like one little slice. I'm going in with my banana peppers, 
pretty heavy load this time. <laughs> I wish I had some onions. It looks like you could fold those sides over and make like a stuffed pizza. I'm making a stuffed crust pizza with that. Mm. Okay, then I'm gonna go in with some Parmesan on top of mine. Mmm, you're gonna want it. <laughs> that cheese is good, isn't it? I don't know, I didn't taste it yet. Sure it is though. It's like the real deal. So if you've been here for a while, you've probably heard us go on and on and on about how awesome our pizza sauce is. And I'm telling you again, because if you haven't made it yet, you really need to try it. All right, so you didn't use all the sausage. I was being moderate. So sausage? No, yeah. I was saving some for you. I used some. I was just being moderate, so. Oh. Are you done with this cheese? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm just doing like dollops of pizza sauce on mine, just so I have a little bit in each bite. And I'll go back on with some more sausage. And then I really like flavored crust, so that's why I saved my butter bag. So I can brush my crust with my butter, and then I'm going to sprinkle some everything but the bagel seasoning on it. <laughs> All right, guys, there's my pizza. Still have some basil plants up in the window in the kitchen from this year's garden that are still just making leaves, making leaves. Might as well chop some up and drop it on. Oven is... Oh, it is ready. 500 degrees. You ready to go? Yeah. All right. All right, and they're going. Rachel, Todd. <laughs> we'll have lunch for tomorrow. Piece of my stuffed crust. Oh, look at this stuff. <laughs> Good job. Wow. My stuffed crust totally worked. So that shows you the bit of rise that we got from the dough, even though it didn't ferment very well. I mean, that this I had mine very, very thin. So mine's super thin crust. But that is going to be yummy to eat. All right, let's see how Todd's did. Mine had this giant air pocket right in the middle under the crust. Yeah, right in the middle part. Nice. Yeah, it looks good. It smells amazing. I just tasted my crust. It was sweet. Sweet? Yeah, it was good. Like, not in a bad way. Not overly sweet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good. Loaded with cheese, that's for sure. All right, so I'm just putting on some fresh basil on mine so I can go sit down. If you are new to cooking pizza in cast iron at 500 degrees like this, it's got to cool. Otherwise, you will definitely burn your mouth. But I tasted mine. Mmm. It's so, so, so good. Mm-hmm. Definitely, definitely would do it again. Honestly, Todd, when you taste this, it's my best flavored crust that we've made so really? far. Mm -hmm. nice. All right. Thanks, guys, and happy pizza making with your Amish friendship starter.